To begin the vertical stabilizer assembly, start by gathering all the components listed on the table of the exploded diagram page. As you can see, I've already got everything unwrapped, deburred, dimpled where necessary, and thoroughly cleaned. And I've placed everything in the general layout of the exploded diagram. This both helps me understand the order everything's going to go in, the orientation, as well as make sure that I've got all the necessary components ahead of time. I've already got everything dimpled in accordance with the first page of the assembly manual. As always, make close check of which holes need to be dimpled and which direction. So the first page of the actual assembly, we're going to start by installing the rivnuts nuts onto the doubler plate and then clecoing this portion of the assembly together. A few things to make note of before riveting this assembly together is everywhere that has an M4 rivnut nut installed, so on the second doubler plate as well as the first doubler plate, you're going to need to be able to pass M4 bolts through the other channels. So for the upper seven bolts, you're going to need to be able to pass it through both the spar as well as the first doubler plate. And for the bottom two on each side, you're gonna need to be able to pass the bolt through the spar. So I like to upsize these holes to 4.5 millimeters ahead of time, and then clico everything together, and then just double check, install all your M4 bolts along here on both sides to make sure that everything's gonna pass through smoothly. Um, the problem is that once everything's riveted together, you will not be able to clear drill these out anymore um, because the riv nuts are going to be blocking it. Another thing to make note of is even though the manual does say to rivet it, the outer four holes on this bottom hinge bracket here do not get riveted. There's AN bolts that pass through there later on um, to mount the vertical stabilizer to the fuselage. So now it's time to rivet these assemblies together. Um, of course, making note of these, these holes as well as all of the rib mounting holes which we'll rivet later on. Now that we have our two spar channels all riveted together, it's time to clico the rest of the assembly in place. Um, if you prefer, you can actually clico everything together. All of these rivets that I've already got in here are accessible after this next step. So if you want to build a little bit of a head without permanently affixing everything together, that is an option. And um, a lot of times it is highly valuable to do that so you can see kind of how everything's going to go before you shoot the rivets. But so now it's time to start clecoing, and um, we'll get the next step done. So now that we've got the rib structure or the skeleton finished and riveted for the vertical stabilizer, it's time to run the wires. So there are two mounting, two hole locations, the front set back to the back hole there and the rear set here. So if you have a strobe and a nav antenna, those are going to be your locations to run the wire. You'll enlarge whichever hole set that you're going to use to 3 8 or 9.5 millimeters. Uh, this particular build does not have a nav antenna, so we're only going to run wire, one wire up through the front set of holes with the grommets, and then out the back, the very top hole here is going to use edge protector where the wire exits through the rib hole. So now that we've got the wire run through the vertical stabilizer, it's really just a matter of installing your grommets in the holes and then using a little bit of soapy water to help lubricate the wire on the way through those grommets. You want to make sure to leave enough length on each end of the wire to install your connectors down the line. And in addition to that, um, down here at the bottom of the assembly, you want to leave enough wire to, to nest the wire after final assembly um, to help not allow those wires to interfere with your elevator counterweight. Uh, leaving too much wire is always better, of course, than not enough wire because you can always go back and trim it as you need um, when you're a little bit closer to final assembly and you can see how everything's going to fit together. Um, after that we're going to uh, double check to make sure that the ribs follow a smooth curve and that there's no rib that's out of place or bending up or down and um, you can kind of use a straight edge to help check the straighter channels and make sure that the rib here is aligning with the channel um, but of course the, the ribs are curved so you want to keep that in mind too. Doing that now is a lot better than assembling with Clecos and then finding out you've got dips or waves and then you got to remove everything and uh, correct the issue afterwards. Uh, you can get it fairly close if not perfect just from a thorough visual inspection here. The next step is going to be we're going to Cleco the skin onto the skeleton and working on a flat surface of course to prevent any twist in the assembly 
and if everything looks straight and square, we'll rivet the skins on. The best way to check the twist alignment of your vertical stabilizer is with a laser level. They're available for around $40 from your local hardware store, and due to the slope on the top and bottom of, the, of this component, it's uh, really difficult to get a plumb bob to work accurately. Uh, the instructions say to use a line and draw it down the center, and then check it with a bubble level. You can do that as well. Uh, it's just very difficult to get the line drawn perfectly straight and then to get the level aligned perfectly straight to that line that you've drawn. Uh, as you can see here, you orient the vertical stabilizer and then check it for level on your table. And if the laser aligns with the hinge bracket and then down the center of all the holes, uh, everything's good to go. You check both sides without moving the part itself. And as long as everything lines up on both sides, you're good to start riveting. The last thing to make note of before riveting our skins on is the second and fifth holes here and here on both sides need to be left unriveted. After riveting is complete, we're gonna drill those out and install M4 riv nuts. Uh, they're used to attach a control plate from the vertical stabilizer to the fuselage after final assembly. In addition to that, the bottom corner on each side should be pre-drilled to 4.5 millimeters to allow the M4 bolt to get into the riv nut that's behind it there. Uh, once again, just like before, you don't want to have the skin riveted on and have that still at three millimeters. So uh, now we're ready to begin riveting. You've now completed your vertical stabilizer. It should look like this, and it should be a very nice, very rewarding uh, finished part.